Hello everyone, I'm Hannah Martin from Talent Ladies Club. Welcome to the webinar. Um, I am just going to see if Amanda's here. Um, I will put her on as a panelist and introduce you all to her. Uh, I'll just find her. Brilliant. So Amanda is here. I'm just going to wait for her video to come on and I will introduce you all to her. If it'll come on in a second. Um, so we're waiting. I hope you're all looking forward to this. Um, during the webinar, um, Amanda's going to give her class. If you have any questions, um, Amanda will answer them for you at the end, but please do ask them um in chat as we're going along and i'll monitor them and i'll put them to amanda at the end so hello amanda welcome hi can you hear me okay yes i can yes. um can everyone just let me know i'm just going to open up chat um that you can see and hear both amanda and i just say yes if you can hi I see joe's here hello joe hello, uh, brilliant jean joe rebecca yeah everyone can see and hear us both brilliant so um welcome everybody this is amanda ruiz um, and she is a PR expert for entrepreneurs. I will let you do a proper introduction. Um, Thank you. And I'm really excited to watch your class as well, I have to say. Ooh! <laughs> I've had a sneak preview of the slide, so it looks really good. Um, I'm, so I'm just going to just pop myself off in a second and hand over to you properly. Just to remind everyone, if you do have any questions for Amanda, do feel free to ask them in chat during the class. I'll monitor them um, and I will put them to Amanda at the end. So if you want, if you've got a burning question about PR on your business, now's the chance to get an expert's opinion on it. Um, so I might I'm, even ask questions during the webinar. So Hannah, you might you might have to unmute, but let's see how it goes. <laughs> yeah, if there's any urgent ones, I'll, I'll put them to Amanda during the webinar. Um, I don't want to interrupt your flow, which is why I normally do them at the end. No, it, what I'm saying is I might ask people to say raise their hand brilliant. or something. Oh, brilliant. Okay, that's oh, okay. fantastic. So I'm going to go. Thank you, and I will hand over to Amanda. Fab. Okay. So what I'm going to now do is share my screen. I'm going to come off video as well. Hold on, share screen. Oh, you don't want to see that, do you? Where's this? Here we are. Perfect. Okay. Right. Can everybody hear me? Can we? Can you see my screen? I just want to. Um, do you mind just unmuting Hannah quickly to make sure you can see my screen? I don't want to be talking into the ether. <laughs> are you there? So hopefully everybody can hear me. All right. So I'm going to kick off. Here we are. Chat. Let's just see what the chat says. Uh, yes. Okay. Perfecto. Right. I'm going to start going. Okay. So thank you very much everybody for joining us on this beautiful sunny day. I'm sure you prefer to be outside sunning yourselves <coughs> rather than learning how to get press coverage or not. Um, hold on. <coughs> so you are here because you may be the best kept secret. So my history is I set up a knitwear business, which I'll tell you about in a minute, but this kept on happening to me all the time. It was really frustrating. Do you have a huge message to get out there? Now is your time to share it. But you're thinking, how on earth do I spread my message? You know, social media doing your nut in, you know, what is it about it that actually you recognize why you need to get into the press? And are you sick and tired of seeing your competition everywhere? Are there times that actually you open up the newspaper or you turn on the radio or you look at Facebook and it's like, oh my God, my, my competition is popping up everywhere. Why aren't I there all the time? It's a, a question which I asked myself when I was running my knitwear business back in 2008 onwards. It's like, oh my God, I had one particular competitor and they were everywhere. Okay, they're a huge organization, but yet it still did my nothing because I still wanted to be out there and loud and proud. So whatever your business, however small it is, you still can be recognized by the press. And are you constantly competing with social media? So have you set up multiple accounts? Do you have Pinterest, Instagram? Uh, you know, LinkedIn, whatever you're doing, you're just feeling you're putting a post on LinkedIn, nobody's ever looking at it. Um, the power of PR can actually help you reach people in places. I, it rather sounds like the Castleberg advert. You know, you can reach places and <laughs> people in places you've never actually heard of. <clears throat> Excuse me, got a frog in my throat. 
Uh, and that is amazing because when I was selling my knitwear, yes, I would do all my tweeting, but actually I would get my berets into the independent and I would be getting orders from you know villages and towns that I've never ever heard of here in the UK so it was really incredible so don't think social media is the only way to promote your business and then some of you might have actually sent out some press releases so <clears throat> if you just want to put in the chat box yes you've sent out a press release and it's being being ignored please uh, put that there and also, you know, do you open up your Instagram feed or you look at, you know, because you can actually, do you know that nowadays um, all these publications, you've got Sunday Times, Food, most of the publications actually are on Instagram. So are you missing out on opportunities and you think, oh my God, I wish I'd have, I can appear into those publications. Do you keep on seeing opportunities? Again, I'll give you an, I'll give you an idea. Uh, when I was selling my knitwear, I sell beautiful luxury knitwear. And what happened was I suddenly saw Saw, I think in around uh, September time because it was knitwear I would see like heat magazines did a huge spread on berets beautiful knitted berets I thought why on earth aren't I there so you know whatever business you're in what is it you're in and do you want to see opportunity thinking oh my god you know they're wheeling out the same expert time and time again so now it's your time to think okay I'm gonna get here and I'm gonna get with the press so in today's webinar, I'm going to show you how you can get instant credibility in your own industry and how you can grow your business with the power of PR and how you can be seen as the media friendly because it's all about being media friendly. The press want to know that you can speak eloquently to them. Don't worry if you don't feel quite there yet. You know, that's something I can help you with. Um, and how you can be that expert that they're going to call up and go, right, we've seen your press release or we've seen, you know, in your website, we've Googled, we've searched and you're the person who's come up time and time again there. So they'll be calling you, you know, the producers will be calling you if they need somebody to speak on mumpreneurs or whatever lines of businesses that you work in. And also you'll show, I'll be showing you, you know, that by getting into the press, you can grow your mailing list and you can increase your followers who wants a bit of that I do more sales inquiries as well okay so this is what PR does for you and you know what do not spend any more money on expensive adverts because I did that as well running my knitwear business I kept on getting called up and getting highly flattered by people saying oh Amanda we love your knitwear uh, the editor has selected you pers has personally selected you uh, and don't forget it's only 500 pounds for the advert and it'll <laughs> it'll reach X Y and Z market but I tell you one thing I actually was a sucker to that and I did used to do ad sales so I kind of maybe I was buying because I felt sorry for the ad sales people but it never ever got me any leads. It was literally the PR that got me the leads. So a quick introduction about who I am. I started off my life as a guinea pig entrepreneur. My parents used to sell uh, tomato plants under Bridge North Town Hall. I went there went there over the Easter holidays and it was lovely it's still there it looks beautiful uh, and they're selling tomato plants and my guinea pig had recently bred and I thought wow so many people passing by with coins jingly jangling in their pockets why don't I get a bit of this action actually sell some of my little baby cute guinea pigs and I did I don't know how much I sold them for probably 10p or 20p it was my first ever taste of um, you know being an entrepreneur and I loved it I actually then went on to getting sent to the headmistress for selling creating a craze of selling beaded bracelets uh, at my school and then I went off when I was at university I sold um, sailor return jewelry to hairdressing salons so I've always loved you know selling seeing a market and selling to that market so I love doing that um, I then once I'd worked you know I used to work in uh, in London and various marketing agencies I went off to have my first child and I'm sure many people listening sometimes when you, when you have a child it actually changes you, your direction totally uh, and I copied what my mum was doing she used to sell beads which is why I got sent to the headmistress for, you know, for um, <laughs> peddling her wares um, she was importing them from all around the world and actually what I went and did was I imported knitwear from uh, my husband's country which is Peru based uh, and I managed to secure some amazing press coverage, you know, in the, most of the glossies and the dailies uh, and also online as well. So I tell you one thing, getting covered, it really uh, is a fantastic confidence booster as well as also getting, uh, you know, getting those amazing orders. 
So now I'm known as the ultimate door opener because what I did was I managed to get so much press coverage. And I also did about 125 pop-up shops. So I was seeing people, you know, in these exhibitions and charities fairs and all the rest of it. And they would see me getting into the press and they'd actually help. They'd say, Amanda, can you help me get into the press? And I thought, oh, well, actually, maybe I should start doing that more than I'm doing my knitwear. So I did my knitwear for a good few years, but actually I was pulled away, pulled in direction to doing what I'm doing now. And I love it. And I help people open their own doors, yes, to the press that they'd love to get in touch with. And often it has had totally game-changing opportunities for them. Somebody, I got a client into um, a Red Top magazine, a Red Top newspaper, and you know what? He told me that he had £80,000 worth of sales as, as contracts, and then he got another contract, and in total, that one article got him 210 k's worth of business i mean that is incredible so sometimes press can totally game change your business and if it's just a slow trickle that is great because people are seeing your logos on sorry their press logos on your website and so your clients are going to be more inspired about buying from you and go oh and they might share it and then actually can use social media to social share your um you know your press so that is another way that you can grow your database and I've also recently been voted as the number one PR advisor for Enterprise Nations 2018 award. So that was incredible. I'm going to talk about that in a minute, which is quite an interesting backstory. Um, so I'm now known as the PR expert from entrepreneurs. I still have my Peruvian heritage. My husband's just gone over to Peru. And if you'd have seen me earlier, you saw a little, um, you saw my roller banner. There's a little uh, a basket and that was full of little llamas. And so I, <laughs> when I have new clients, I give them a little um, llama key ring. It's really good fun. Anyway, so here we are. It all started here, selling beautiful luxury knitwear imp imported from Peru. Oops. Sorry, hold on a sec. And these are the press mentions that I managed to get myself on my own, two screaming children. I used to dolly trolley my children into WH Smith and buy up the magazines that I'd love to get into. Uh, and then I'd look at the front piece, you know, where it says that all the contact details and I would, you know, smile and dial and get in touch and chase the journalists. But what I did, it was really amazing by doing it all myself and also working for my mother's business back in the 1990s. I used to help her PR agent. I actually formulated a proven process on how to get into the press which is why I am now teaching people how they can secure their own coverage. So you need to think, what are those dream publications you'd like to get in front of? Rip, the, rip off the front uh, slice, you know, the magazine cover, put it onto your wall and let that haunt you every day. So every day think, what have I done today to try and get into that magazine? And it doesn't mean haranguing them and being really annoying. It actually means having it on your vision board and liking, retweeting what those journalists are saying. So you can kind of just get in their headspace and you need to buy it. But again, I'm going to give you some other tips as well in a minute. Now, I don't know if you've heard of this quote before, publicity by Richard Branson, no less. Publicity is absolutely critical. A good PR story is infinitely more effective than a front page ad. So that really backs up what I was saying earlier about having uh, advertising really, you know, even though I used to work in ad sales, it was great getting those sales for the, you know, the publishing companies. But actually, in order for you to get more business, I, I truly and personally believe through experience, getting yourself in front of the press is the best way to do it. And this is what Jean-Louis Gasset, I don't know how to pronounce that, says. He's actually uh, an associate of Apple. He says, advertising is saying you're good. PR is getting somebody else to say you're good. And that is absolutely true. So that is why I've managed to help my clients get themselves multiple client press mentions. You can just see some examples here with the amazing publicity, GMTV, Metro, Glossy Magazines, local press. It actually works for both local and trade press, whether you're B2B, B2C, it, you know, the same principles apply. Even if you're promoting your own book, it's the, you know, the same principles do apply. But it's so powerful, okay, all this getting into the press, but why isn't everybody else doing it? And why aren't all of us on the front pages every day? Okay, and I'll tell you why, it's because it's a very different industry to your own. So I have spent many, many years, over a decade, honing how to get into the press. Okay, and time and time again, people, experts, make the mistakes, but with a few little tweaks, which I'm gonna show you in a minute, you can be seen as the media-friendly go-to expert. So I'm going to run through the top three mistakes that people are making. 
And the great news is that I've actually cracked the code because I've been at the coal face running a boutique PR agency and also teaching my clients every day how to do it. So that is what I'm going to be showing you very shortly. And it's not only just for my business promoting me, it's actually promoting my clients business because I'm all about integrity and I love people to really get the most out of getting their publicity. And I'm going to show you the secrets right now of how to be seen everywhere. Okay, who wants to be seen everywhere? I think we all do because it's really important to grow our businesses like that. So the first mistake that people make is actually having the fear of doing self-promotion. So being afraid of self-promotion is very, very normal. We all have that fear. And you know what? If you're British, it's kind of drummed into you. Um, you know, do not self-promote and perhaps... People will say, women, we hate self-promotion even more than men. You know, you do hear the statistics that men are much more pushy when it comes to uh, getting those, uh, you know, the, the pay rises and all the rest of it. So either if you're British or you're a woman, like all the, all the odds are stacked against you. But do you know what? If you are not going to self-promote, then who will do it unless you're paying an expensive PR agency? So I think what you need to do is get over the fear of being... Now, do you know what? My little story is I was um, nominated as a top 10, P sorry, top 10 business advisor for the Enterprise Nation Awards. And I got the email through for Enterprise Nation saying, congratulations, it's now open to a public vote. You now have to go and get yourself the votes. And if you get enough votes, you know, basically it's like a popularity contest. I thought, oh my God, I just don't want to go ahead and do it. It makes me feel really icky. I just want to do it organically and let people just, if they see the nominations, they're going to do it. But then I thought, do you know what? You teach this to people every single day. So even me, the queen of self-promo, I really didn't want to self-promote myself, <laughs> do it to myself, but I got over it. I had two people speak to me and say, Amanda, this is what you do every day. You've got to go and do it. And then I ended up winning the award, which was incredible, amazing accolade. And you know, I'm really, really grateful to everybody. And thank you, Hannah. I know that you voted for me as well. And you retweeted it. You know, so that was me saying, please, can you do me a favor? And it wasn't me being all over the place. Well, actually, I was quite all over the place. But I kind of did a fun campaign. I didn't do it all dry. I used to, you know, I put up silly, um, you know, uh, how do you call them? you know, all the, you know, the moustaches and all that kind of stuff, you know, the, what are they called? Fillers or filters, <laughs> whatever they're called. I did Facebook lives with stupid filters and I said, thank you so much. You know, so self-promotion, you can do it in a nice way that doesn't get on people's nerves. And actually, if it gets on people's nerves, then probably they're, they're not the right people for you. So when I actually won the award, I had so many people congratulating me on Facebook. I thought, oh, well, I've actually done something right because even people I've never even heard of were saying, Amanda, congratulations. So everybody, all of you, if you do start to do a, a very small self-promo activity a day, that will really, really help you get out there. And it's not every day on Twitter going, hey, it's me, Amanda, buy my program. No, it's not that. It's helping your colleagues, your entrepreneurial friends. It's also helping journalists. So you, retw you retweet, you like, and you share. That's what self-promotion is about. And then it's like the 80-20 rule. 80% you're helping other people and 20% is actually promoting yourself. So yeah, I kind of went through like a three, uh, you know, three week mad period of being locker and um, self promo, but actually the rest of the time I'm helping other people. Um, so that was my example. Uh, and also you probably think this as well, but maybe before you started your own businesses, you used to work for a company and you wouldn't mind promoting them. But when it comes to promoting yourself, you feel a bit icky and a bit less confident. So you need to kind of get over that because it's what puts bread on the table. You know, literally you want to uh, earn the money. You want to get the sales. You actually need to just get over it and start doing for the self promo. So do you know what? It's the importance to becoming, you know, being the go-to expert or just trundling along for years and just kind of being a bit of a dot on the horizon. So I'm going to give you a great example of Nikki. She's a client who is really amazing. She set up an award-winning um, practice over in Bishop Stortford. She has people coming over from, you know, from far and wide, from the US, from Scandinavia, to be treated by her. She's called the physiotherapist with magic hands. She came onto my program, I don't know, about six or seven months ago, uh, and you know, not really having much of an idea on how to self-promote, not having an idea of how to pitch to the press. But whenever I do my weekly Q, 
Q&A with her and with all my other clients who are on my program, she goes, oh, by the way, Amanda, I've just pitched to Philip Schofield. Oh, by the way, Amanda, I've just pitched to the Yoga Magazine. And look at the results that she's getting. She's been published in Horse and Hound, Psychologies, Yoga. She's even got a book contract now, which is amazing. And it's going to go over overseas to the US. So for somebody who really didn't want to do it, or rather she recognized she needed to do it, but she didn't really know how to, she started to do it. And now every single week, I think almost two or three times a, uh, a week, she's actually doing a bit of self promo activity. So it really does work. And then take Sarah, she's amazing. I call her Michaela Angelo because she's actually a classically trained um, uh, sculptor, sculptress, or whatever you call it, sculptor. Uh, she's amazing, she's incredible. And what she does is she actually makes out of chocolate, so all those gory hearts, gory human hearts, they're actually hand painted and she's made the molds out of chocolate. And she came to me saying, Amanda, I really want to get into the press. And again, she was somebody who was very, very self deprecating, not really wanting to get out there, but realizing the benefits of getting you know into the press so we started working together and literally on the same day that i did a vip day with her there was a call out from the metro a journalist from the metro and i showed her how to hone her message how to get a really killer headline because often when you see these journalists call outs it's all very well seeing the call out but if you can't grab the attention of the busy journalist who will have his inbox or her inbox swamped then you'll, you know, again, it'll be uh, ignored. So she did a very killer headline saying, you know, the, you know, and I think maybe some of her headlines were actually uh, replicated on, as you can see here on these headlines. She's also then did a product, an amazing product for um, Easter. She did real live, or not live, but you know, looked like real live um, British bird eggs. It was incredible. So she's somebody who's going to go really, really far. But again, it's like doing a daily self-promotional activity, which will get her there. She's had some incredible inquiries, National Trust, and some other huge organizations have got in touch as a result of her being in the press. So... The second mistake that people make is not actually having a press hook. Now, this is quite a jargony type terminology. What is a press hook? Okay, so a press hook is what makes your story newsworthy and relevant. Okay, so think about when you last pitched to the press and it got ignored, is it because it, you weren't relating it? You weren't, again, I'm going to do bunny ears, you weren't relating it or pegging it to a news story. Okay. Um, yeah, there you go. Uh, and it's also being irrelevant. So, you, you know, you might have the most amazing product you want to sell, but if it's the wrong season, if it's the wrong time of year, if there's nothing in the press that relates to it, then you need to think of another reason why you should get yourself into the press or potentially you're missing the key date. So I totally missed the key date with that um, the Heat magazine. I didn't realize, I totally realize now that magazines work, you know, glossy magazines work three to six months in advance. That's really important for you to know that. And the weekly magazines, I think they're looking about two months in advance so you know if you really want to get into a magazine is it wedding season that you want to get into you need to be thinking right now we're in april may june july and then do you know what in july the magazines are actually talking about christmas so what is it that you're going to relate your story to or your product to and after all, you need to remember that news is news, you know, really, that it, <laughs> that's the killer thing, okay? So why should you be getting into the press? Is it because you're creating new jobs in your local area? Um, is it because you have got a really great launch? Is it because you've got an event that will you know, help ch change people's lives? Have you got any fantastic case studies? What is it about you and your story or your business that should get into the press. Uh, is it about the menopause? Now that was in the press, uh, Women's Hour was covering that a few weeks ago. So you could have got into, the, into that uh, publication for, you know, and I think they were doing, it was like men, menopause month or something. You know, so also look at the calendar and see, you know, the events calendar, I actually have one on my website. But have a look at the events calendar, what you can peg your story to. So take Rose, this is one of my favorite stories because I worked with Rose um, back in 2016 and uh, you know she's a great, we're still in contact and she's getting some really great press coverage. But the reason her press hook was so interesting is because we kind of made her heading, her headline quite killer as well. So she was launching a brand new business. It was African spicy sauces, scotch bonnet and really, you know, uh, killer Bernie sauces. But our heading was this, move over Levi Roots. 
beautiful young female entrepreneur has the secret sauce. Uh, and we had a sub one as well, sub headline, announcing stylish new African spicy and flavorsome condiment to stand out from the crowd. Now this press release really stood out from the crowd and I'll tell you one thing, my inbox was just bombarded with uh, magazines. You know, I had BBC Good Food, I had Waitrose Magazine, had all sorts of uh, publications. She was literally in the trade press that afternoon. I also had a bit of a complaint from an ex-master chef um, judge saying, because he writes for The Guardian, saying, Amanda, fancy using your client's looks and gender and age to get her into the press. Well, I'm terribly sorry. It blooming well worked. And she had, you know, she was inundated and she said she's still keeping up with the, with the press. <laughs> so I tell you one thing. What are you approaching the press about? Is it a launch? Okay, so if it's a launch, why is it relevant? Or what can you peg it to? We also use the name Levi Roots because he's like making huge waves over in the, uh, you know, in the source area, thanks to Dragon's Den. So, you know, I thought it was quite cheeky, but she liked it and it totally worked. And then take Ruth. So she got into the press because she was alerted to a press call out and it was just for her lovely gluten-free mince pies and she had her best month ever. It was incredible as a result of literally getting in to the independent. So what are you pegging your story around? And you might be a life coach, you might be a, you know, a business coach. So what is it? Gender pay gap, what can you talk about? So you might have a speciality, but you might also be able to talk about something else which can get you onto the TV or get you on as a commentator. Just think about what it is you want to approach the press about. Now, another mistake is actually, I think this is the third mistake, is going in cold. How many of you are going in cold? Look at the icebergs there, okay? Now, every time you approach the press, I want you to think, no, I'm going to go in warm. So please do not do a spray and pray campaign. And what you do, what often people do is they don't personalize their messages to journalists. So um, what they're doing is like a spray and pray. They think, oh my God, I want to get into the press. I've got this amazing launch. So I'm going to approach 30 journalists. I'm going to do it today. I'm going to do it this morning. And that's totally the wrong way. You need to do a bit of a campaign. You need to research your journalists over a period of time. You need to research the very publication you'd love to get in touch with. <clears throat> and then you can personalize it. I'm going to give you a real killer tip from... Um, uh, a Daily Mail uh, journalist and he said why don't you put my name in the actual subject email box okay he's called Myron Jobson so he says he often or more likely than ever will open an email when it says Myron check out this amazing launch or oh, that's that's quite a bad heading but you know Myron blah 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 you know think about what your thing is but actually putting his name there and then obviously don't forget to take out the person's name before and say, dear Myron, I really enjoyed reading your piece on this is money in, daily, in the Daily Mail. It really resonated with me with this, this and this. Short sentence. And then you go in with your very short and sharp pitch. Uh, yeah. And another problem is people, the mistake is they don't do any research and they pitch the wrong piece to the wrong editor. So that really is going in cold. So here's a really great editor. I love Susie Greaves. Have you all heard of Psychologist Magazine? So um, Susie runs Psychologist Magazine. And a few years back, this is where I was christened the ultimate door opener. I had a client and a friend of mine, actually. She said, Amanda, I would love to get into Psychologist Magazine. I have been reading it and buying it for many, 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 many years. She can even like put them as a coffee table. You know, she's got so many piled up. She can have four legs as a coffee for, to, to put on her coffee table, if you know what I mean. Anyway, so I had a, you know, that was, that was the only magazine she wanted to get in touch with. So I thought, oh my God, this is a bit of a steep challenge. So I did a bit of research and I discovered if you just look at her, Susie's column piece, you know, the editor's piece, it says, I have a dog and I love my dog called Oscar. And I got a new puppy. Uh, Pe that's Perry now. But he was, first, he was a little puppy when I um, got in touch with him. It was amazing. So I just thought, how am I going to get in touch with this editor? She's got a soft spot for dogs. And she says, anytime you want to get in touch with me, show me pictures of your dogs and I'll, and I'll open up your email. I mean, that's probably going over the top because I think she's got around 38,000 unread emails. Okay. So to try and get past her is quite a challenge. But that was kind of like my little angle to get in there. And it really, really worked. Uh, and so she's given me a quotation. I've worked quite closely with her and I've got quite a few uh, of my contacts actually into psychologists, doing Facebook lives to psychologists. 
um, you know, having comments, having a dossier piece written about them, case studies. So it really works. And she's a lovely woman, but I didn't go in, I didn't go in cold with her. I had to kind of get to know her. I followed her on Twitter to make sure that she wasn't on holiday. There's no point sending a pitch to a journalist if they're off in the Bahamas, yeah? Because your email will totally get ignored. So watch their activity wherever, in whatever channels you are mainly on. So Susie says this, stop thinking about yourself. Often we're so excited about what we have to offer that we go straight in and pitch how great we think our products and services are. So instead of thinking about your offering, get into the head of the magazine's reader. So why would it be good for the magazine's reader is her killer tip. Here's another killer tip for my journo colleague. We work very, very closely together. I, in fact, was with her yesterday doing a VIP day. This is Helen Croydon. She's very often on the uh, Good Morning Britain show. She works on ITV, ITN, and is a freelancer. So this is what Helen says. Read the publication before you pitch and identify how and where your story might fit. That's always better than taking a scattergun approach to hope that your story might just fit in anywhere. Okay, so the scattergun approach, I just call that spraying and praying. So all publications and TV and radio will have a regular slot. Okay, so just think about those slots, think about the magazines. So tailor your pitch. It's not just for a publication, but also for a section. So I hope that has been a really good tip for you. Both those tips from those journals, amazing tips. So I'm actually going to recap about what I've just been telling you. And I've done it in 30, 30 minutes, so that's quite good. Uh, the three mistakes are these. People have the fear of self-promo, so please get over your fear of self-promotion because if you don't do it, then who else is going to do it unless you're paying an expensive PR agency? Not having a press hook, not being relevant, not pegging your story to something in the press. And also going in cold, so don't make those three mistakes. Think about the opposite. So the opposite is uh, loving self-promo, is having a press hook and being relevant and being warm, okay? So making sure that you actually know the publications you get into, you want to get into. So this could be you getting all of this amazing press coverage and it could help you grow your list, can help you get recognized, but not only by your clients, but also by your colleagues. And then you get speaking gigs and get invited to, you know, do webinars uh, and speak on stage. You get more sales. Yes, that's what we want. And you get more inquiries. Okay, so you might not always sell on the first time, but actually people are going to be making inquiries. They might join your database and slowly, slowly after a year or six months or three months, they might become your client. As I said, you get speaking gigs and then hooray, woo woo. You too can share your message with millions, okay? Because I tell you one thing, um, people say the print industry is, is dead and it's going out. I tell you another thing, I listened to the media show and Harper's Bazaar editor was on it the other day, uh, I think she's called Juliette Picardy, and she said they've had a 30% increase uptake in subscriptions uh, and sales, and so it's going really well. So do you know what? I'm gonna keep on buying my printed publications and also scouring online. So it could also be you. So what I'd like to do is invite you, if, any, if, if this is relevant for you, if you've enjoyed what I've been saying, you think that we might be able to work together, if you want to hop onto a discovery call and I can see how I can potentially help you get your business out there so you can share your message with millions. So thank you so much. Hannah, over to you. Thank you, Amanda. That was brilliant. <laughs> I didn't see whether anyone was hearing me. I didn't see any chat boxing. So I was thinking, oh my God, am I... No, uh, I, I think everyone was too, probably too busy making notes. <laughs> <laughs> right, do um, you want to put me on video now? I don't know how to do that. Uh, you should be able to... If you, oh, if, here we are. Got it. Yeah. Ta-da! Um, so thank you so much. Everyone, if you have any questions you would like to put to Amanda, now is your chance in chat. If you want to even just put like, if you can think of how would you sum yourself up in a headline that you would pitch to a journalist and you want to get Amanda's opinion on it, do it now. You've got her. Um, get her PR brain on your, on your headlines for free. So any questions at all you've got about PR, anything you'd love to know, want to test your, your, your kind of your, your hook to her, do so now. Uh, Jean says, is the local press worth going to as far as local girl does good? Oh my God, you've stolen my line. Look, I'm gonna go into the chat box, hang on. Uh, da, 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 chat. 
So, um, Jean, thank you for that amazing question. I got into um, Worcester. So I, I live in Essex. I'm from Worcester, actually, and then before that from Original. So uh, when I launched my knitwear business, I always call it Local Girl Done Good. Yes, I tell you one thing, go local. Um, and also the great news about going to local press is this. Uh, you're going to cut your teeth so it, with, you know, with uh, your pitch. So do you know, when you, if you want to go straight into the Telegraph, to the editor, do not do that first off. You can screw up your lines when you're calling up the local Worcester Gazette. They're much nicer, the local journalists, because you see, they're not so up their own asses. <laughs> Sorry to, to swear on your <laughs> webinar, but do you know what I mean? You know, they're not so ooh, like that. So definitely go local. And that is where the nationals get their stories from. OK, um, I do a pitch clinic once a month and um, Sarah Collins, who's from ITV, says we are scouring the local press. So please, Jean, go, go, go. I have to say, quite a few years ago, before I was in business, um, I had a story in the press. And once that one story was out there, I got contacted by everybody wanting their angle on that story, um, including TV shows. Wow. As well. What was the story? Uh, it, I, it was, it's how, yeah, I met, that's share. how I met my ex, my ex-husband was basically Tarzan, um, so that's going way back, but how I met my ex-husband, um, and it was quite a... Do you mean it was Tarzan? I met him in the jungle, he literally... Oh my god, well, what a great hook! <laughs> I know, it's uh, yeah, I married Tarzan, well, and that, that was the, uh, that was the thing, anyway, that was, that's a whole other marriage <laughs> part. <laughs> But, but that is actually being creative, though, with your story. So, Jean, I don't know what your business is. Do you want to share what you do, Jean? Um, and it's, it is really having a very, very compelling headline, which is what will make people uh, click onto your, you know, onto your email. Because uh, journalists say in all of these events, whenever I go meet them, they say they get about 300 emails a day into their inbox. So if your one bounces out, like the one I showed you with Rose, move over Levi Roots, it's like, oh, wow, okay. Do you know what I mean? Um, what are you just saying? You'll bring a craft product to market, design it with my husband. Okay, husband and what you say. That's that'll be quite a good one. Uh, and I think often people are looking, the journalists are often looking for family businesses, family run businesses. So you can say how my, my husband and I haven't had a divorce yet and we, we work together. You know, it's... <laughs> People always, it's human interest. You need to think about why you pick up a magazine or a, a newspaper or click on it. Why are you reading that particular article? It's because there's a human interest element to it. Absolutely. I think um, definitely with the, the husband and wife thing. Um, but yeah. Does anyone else have any uh jean says thank you um but i was to say just going back to your your comment about um press releases i mean i, I i'm not a journalist but i still get I, I've, I've somehow made it onto a pr list and i wish i wasn't on it um i have probably about thirty-eight thousand on my emails in my inbox as well really I, 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 I know exactly and i'm not the answer of psychology um mm. but i get bombarded every single day by really disinterested press, rele press releases that aren't written with any thought and these are from PR companies actually with no uh, hook with no nothing really in it at all um so if you can write one that stands out and you yeah. pick it appropriately it's refreshing it's, it's actually yeah. really nice to read one that's thoughtful and almost gives you the story because if you're a really busy person you don't want to do the hard work and I'd imagine journalists as well get low oh. It's very, very stressful. That their industry is, is not a nice one to be in. You know, I work with Helen Croydon and she's telling me, you know, and I also, when I call up uh, news desks, they're like this, news desk. And it's like, oh my God, it makes you scared. It's like, oh my God, they're going to be so aggressive. It's just because they are in such a busy, rushing environment. But if you can just quickly get your story, your point across in less than 30 seconds, because when I pitch to Harriet Minter, they're like this, okay, here's the telephone. And they're tapping on their computer. Yeah, yeah. And if you, hear the, if you hear them stop typing, it's like, oh, wow, okay, I've got over 30 seconds. So you have to think, what can you get over in 30 seconds that will be compelling? Uh, if you, ultimately, I mean, this is something that I, I learned from advertising, everyone operates off self-interest. So a journalist doesn't actually, if they just met you for the first time, they don't really care about you and your business. What they care is being able to get a story that's going to make the editor love them, that's going to make the readers want to read it, that's going to help their career. Um, Perfect. Get the scoop. 
Yes, if you can make their job easier by delivering something that makes them look good and gets the yeah. results they want, they'll love you. Yeah, that's what a great tip, Hannah Martin. <laughs> you know how to get into the press. <laughs> I just don't have time to do it. Yeah. Um, does anyone else have any questions? You've got Amanda here. I mean, my gosh, you've got a pure brain ready to pick. Um, why don't you put in the chat, how many people are on it? I can't see how many people are on the call. 12, okay, so why don't you just quickly type in what you do? Oh, Naomi's got one here. Do you pitch differently if you are selling interior products which use visual medium more rather than a story lead product? Lead I'm product. an interior company selling products for children's bedrooms. Oh, wow. Okay. So have you ever got into the press before, Naomi? Um, and do you, you have a children's interiors company? Okay. So do you produce these products? Are they British made? You know, let's try and find a press hook for those very products that you're actually selling. Okay. Um, have you had any weird clients or kind of strange jobs? Yeah. Wow. Have you had a child have a gross tantrum? Have you had a child, you know, who's suddenly got great grades as a result of having a beautifully designed room? I think my daughter would love you to come to here because she she hates her bedroom. So um, even things like a child could never sleep and then suddenly they didn't they weren't having scary dreams anymore. Yeah, yeah. case studies exactly. That's probably why you know. So see if you can get any of your clients to um you know to do any testimonials and have would they be prepared to be photographed as in the child to be photographed in their beautifully designed room uh, and you can say you know yes my child is having nightmares blah 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 and since i've decorated it or since i've helped decorate it or we, the products we've put in it's transformed her life you know that's that's a feel-good story we need feel good with all these horrible things going on brexit and syria and all the rest of it what can we do to make people feel good and i assume that you'd like to get into el deco uh into all the other interiors magazines so you need to buy them i've got a subscription here we are and haven't even opened it yet <laughs> so, you know so you need to subscribe to the magazines or not subscribe but just buy them so you can get to know them and also see what your kind of competitors are doing so i actually say this don't reinvent the wheel be inspired by the wheel a uh, joe says so joe's company so i know joe's joe is brilliant um her company is marketing for mums uh -huh. she provides marketing services for mums and business to help them launch and grow oh, right um so joe what's your question are you looking for are you looking for a hook what's the uh if you can answer that, joe what, what what would you like to ask amanda uh, naomi says that's brilliant thank you good i hope that was inspirational and you can go off and do something but really you know people i go i do so many of these events i'm doing workshops and i Say, okay so hands up who subscribes or who reads the press that they'd like to get into in fact let's do it right now okay do you tune in or or you tuned out so just write in yes oh you do good girl Naomi so you should be you're already a few steps ahead already uh, I listen every day my routine is this you must have missed my newsletter I did the other day it's quite sad really I listen to the today program 7 till 8 30 a.m. Then I listened to Jeremy Vine, my hero. I was actually in the studios a few months ago. That was amazing meeting him. So that's 12 till 2. Uh, also, Woman's Hour is amazing. So try and get that or get the podcast. Uh, then I listen to Steve Wright. But I don't always listen. It's if I'm in the kitchen doing it. I can make a cup of tea or something like that. Then I tune into the Today, sorry, the PM program on uh, the Radio 4. And then I have to watch Channel 4 News every single night. Do you, do you actually uh, work and eat? And <laughs> that, do you know? It's not like I'm sitting there going like that. I, you know, I always have the, to, basically, my killer ones I have to have is the Today, PM, and Channel 4 News. My children are so bloody bored of me in the press. It's like, oh, mum, really? <laughs> At least they're informed children. So, oh, Joe's come back with a question. Yes, it could be great. I launched at the end of October and would like to start getting coverage to raise my profile of me and my brand. Okay. Um, I'm going to throw it back at you, Joe. From what you've learned or seen what I've said today, have you got had any twigs any brain waves any light bulbs go off that you thought oh actually so have a little think about that hannah what were you going to say i was going to say based on what you were asking naomi you know dig down is there anything you know clients that you've had or interesting ways that you work surprising results there's got to be what what's something weird and wonderful about you that would that would be is different to another marketing person. And I know you target mums, so and there's a lot of there's a, a big kind of push now in the media about mothers and working and in business. Um, so is there something in your clients? I know you've worked with Mums Enterprise Roadshow. Could there be something you could kind of almost use that mm -hmm. as your hook into something? 
Yes, and uh, Harriet Minter, do you know her, Hannah? Yes, she's from the uh, Guardian uh, is it Leadership. Yes, she's now a freelancer, um, but I did a workshop with her. And, okay, this is quite funny, because you see there are thousands of life coaches or business coaches out there, and they're constantly approaching her, constantly approaching her. Uh, and then finally, one woman kind of got through to her ra through her radar system, you know, on the Twitter. And she goes, okay, so what's different about you? What makes you stand out, Ben? And she goes, well, I do life coaching. And what we do, we go to Hampstead Heath every morning at 5 a.m. every Sunday morning. And I get all my clients in a group and we all go in a circle and we go on all fours and we howl like wolves. <laughs> so, and then she thought, oh, my God, that's so bloody amazing. I'm going to go, like, go along and do that experience. Now, that's very, very out there and wacky. But what is it that you do differently because there are other marketing businesses out there for mums. What is it that you are different? We are all different. You know, I've got competitors, but nobody's as mad as me. You know, nobody said, nobody is promoting these little things. Look at these little alpacas, because that's going, that's my heritage, you see. <laughs> so I, I, I think fun. that's good. And, and I think that could be the What's your wolf pal moment? There you go. <laughs> your wolf pal moment. Yes, it is. What, and, and you know, and that's something which I teach. It's the golden nugget. What mm. makes you stand out from the crowd? So when I was running my knitwear business, my heritage is, you know, it's the Peruvian heritage. Here we are. So I was uh, importing knitwear from around the world. But I'm bringing up the children, or my husband and I bring up the children bilingually. So that's quite an interesting thing, you know? So what is it about you that makes you really interesting? You've got tar Tarzan up your sleeve. <laughs> no, no, he's gone. Tarzan's gone. We had him. How I, how I, how I cut the vine for tar Tarzan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Um, so Jo, have, have a think and if you've got any questions, you want to put any potential hooks into chat, do and I'll get Amanda to have a look at them. Naomi says, is there a way to find out what where magazines are at their planning, i.e. I don't want to pitch Christmas stuff in July if they aren't looking at it till September or push storage if they are doing a spread on beds? Okay, so what you need to do in that case is what you're looking for is the forward features planning. So you need to, um, you know, pick up the phone and smile and dial, have the uh, bottle to do that and say, you know, because not every single phone call to a journalist is going to be pushy. Just say, hi there, I run this you know, amazing company, life changing, da, 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 da you know, um, check, blah, blah, blah. I'd love to know what forward features you're doing. Could you just quickly tell me what you're doing in April? sorry, June, July, August, September. And they might say, well, we're talking about the millennium. We're talking about Brexit. We're talking about that. You know, they'll give you an idea of their forward features because every single magazine always plans 12 months ahead. And if they say, nope, sorry, you haven't got time. You just have to then go to the junior. Okay. Just so don't worry. I always, I personally always go from the junior upwards because I, I cut my teeth doing that. So when I said go local, that's one thing. Big fat magazine, go do the intern first. Or, you know, just go for somebody who's like off, you know, it says junior uh, editor or junior, junior so-and-so. Mm. I will say, like, taking a different approach, I get loads and loads of emails. Um, but there are a couple of people who have picked up the phone and called me. And they're just so nice and personable. I just like them on the phone. And I go above and beyond. And they'll ask me for things and I'll do them favours. I've never met half of them. But just because they've got the nerve to call me, and they're nice with it. Yeah, yeah. Do you know, I, again, I totally agree with you, Hannah. So, um, yeah. So you go to a journalist panel. There's all these journalists sitting on their little high stools and saying, oh, do this, do that, do the other. They'll also do not call us. So everybody walks away from those events. I had to pitch to the press event. Not my ones, at FYI, but other ones I've been to. And they'll go, oh, my God. And actually, I've got the best results. I only get the best results by calling. I'm being nice and chatty and things I'm quite pushy so oh okay you know so just go okay sorry you can't speak now so when would be a good time to speak or can I speak to you in a few days time I've got this really amazing thing I'd like to help you with or I saw your you know flattery gets you everywhere quite and, genuine flattery hey Gen I would say genuine flattery oh genuine yeah no don't just go I love your shirt like for example I was, I was in a phone shop I was in a tourist shop yesterday in um, Piccadilly because my phone charger suddenly died and this man the vendor said oh I like your I like your um you know your purple jacket so I'll give you a half price and it's like oh, do you know what or no I'll give you one pound off or something I just thought he's that's just fake flattery yeah and, and it's worse than it's actually worse I get um off get quite a few cold pitches people wanting articles on the site and, and they'll just put 
I love your article in and they've literally like cut and paste the URL really? and, they, and you can just see they said this to a hundred people mm. um, and that there is absolutely nothing genuine about it at all I've also had PR people say you know like emails going oh, I love your site I really want to push your story on there and I reply and going well okay actually if, if it is quite interesting and they, they've got me to open the email and I, and I quite like the story so like and then there was some, this happened twice I go okay that, that does sound quite interesting I'll, I'll do that interview or I'll, I'll, I'll place that story they go sorry what publication is this for oh that is so embarrassing so they're going, and I'm like you don't know again oh. okay well like I, I actually retract my offer now because if you you just you know how you think that that's <laughs> that's never going to go down well and I tell you one thing that can I just say something I did that was one of my killer blacklist mistakes okay so I got blacklisted uh, back in my Peruvian knitwear days um so I was desperate to get in. I, I wish I could remember the journalist. So I know I can speak to her as an as a, you know, equal peer and say, sorry. <laughs> but this is what happened, right? So I bought the magazine. So I went to, to you know, to the, um, what do we call it? WH Smith, I bought the magazine. And as you can see, I, I won't find it right now, I take time. But pretend that's the place where it says all the journalists and the names and the numbers. And I used to just literally scribble out. I used to write, da 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 You know, because you, you call up Susie Groove, she'd be, well, don't speak to me, speak to my assistant. So then you write down assistant's name and the number and then I, what I did was I called the same person I think three times or four times and she goes Amanda I'm up a ladder I'm just doing a photo shoot this is the fourth time you've called me in, uh, in the space of 30 minutes goodbye never call me again <laughs> so what you need to do is have a lovely spreadsheet but do you, I've got on my program hint hint <laughs> but, but do you know what I, this is the, what I've learned in business is that you you learn the most valuable lesson on making the biggest mistakes. Yeah. Um, and they often give, you, you get the best rewards because you have to come up with something that's so much better to kind of like make sure you don't do it again that actually yeah. it helps you in the future. And also you need a coping strategy. So, you know, okay, getting into press, it is quite <clears throat> like that, uh, you know, finger biting. So you, you will, yes, you will get um, kickbacks, pushbacks and everything. So what did I do? I was working at, uh, at home alone. You know, it's very isolating, isn't it? Being a mumpreneur, working from home. So I just went upstairs to something totally, uh, what I never ever do. I went upstairs and folded clothes, you know, did the laundry or something. It's like, what am I doing? But it kind of took me away. And then I thought, can I swear? I thought, F you. And I picked up the phone to another journalist and she goes, Amanda, I love your catalogue, your, you know, your beautiful knitwear. Send me in some high-res images, okay? So one no is just from somebody who's a bit, you know, a bit busy, you know, or they've been, yeah. you know, the boss has just shouted at them. But that's an inevitability. The only way you get somewhere is by putting yourself out there. And by putting yourself out there, you risk the no's. Um, and they are going to be inevitable. Everyone gets them. I don't know anyone Absolutely. that's never had a no. Yeah, I totally agree. And do you know what? There's really, I wish I could find it. I might have to dig it out. Uh, there's an article written about if you haven't got, if you haven't had five or six no's in your day, you haven't done enough. Yeah. And that's with the self promo. So please go out there and start doing self promo in a really lovely way. Absolutely. Um, I'm just going to see. So Rebecca says, have to hop off now. Um, but thank you both so much. That's been really useful and interesting. And Naomi says, brilliant. Great advice. Thank you. Thank you. I think that is it. Um, if anyone wants to find you on social media, well, how can they do that? Yes. Um, actually, I should have all my stuff. So basically, I've got my website, amandarees.co.uk. So hopefully all my links are working and up to date. But I have Twitter. If you've liked this, why don't you tweet us both, Hannah and me, a TLC. Uh, it's at Amanda Ruiz UK uh, and that applies for uh, Twitter and Instagram um, there you go so and I also do have a 31 day self promo calendar so um, that's available as well somewhere if you need to hunt it down on my website <laughs> I think it's I've got a, I actually got a place and it's called awesome PR materials or something free PR resources so if you want to get anything else just um, have a look at it. we might put a link to that on the um email when we send a recording out um, um so yeah if anyone wants to watch this again did they miss something i'm going to send a recording out later um and most of you will be watching the recording anyway so i hope you've enjoyed it thank you very much everybody for your amazing questions great to uh, hear and i really hope you know that just go and do one thing today do one thing every day because i was told that by um nikki chisholm do you know her you know her don't yeah. you 
And she said, <clears throat> one of her gurus had said, you need to do one self-promo activity a day. And I kind of took it like a banshee. And that's why I got so much press coverage. Honestly, but it applies to everything. We always, I always preach the little and often approach rather than the, you might have watched this and thinking, yeah, and then I redo PR and you, you kind of blitz it for two weeks and then give up. Yeah. Um, like as Amanda said, if you just do one tiny thing every day, which is so doable, in six months' time, you will have so much more PR coverage than, than you would have had with two weeks of burst of energy. Yes. Um, Joe and Rebecca both say thank you very much. Thank you for joining us. Uh, yeah, thank you for everyone for joining us. Um, thank you so much, Amanda. I've loved it. I, um, I, I made loads of notes as well. And um, I'm going to say goodbye now and go goodbye. off to you. Thank you so much. You're going to end meeting. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.